Whatever you do, do not buy this model car kit until you watch this video. Today we're going all the way back in time as we check out this 1990 Corvette ZR1 from AMT Ertl. This model kit originally came out in 1989, but uh, AMT Ertl stuck this nice sticker on there. What's cool about this model kit is that uh, when my birthday came up, I had to wait out in the parking lot because my wife and kids were buying me a gift and they didn't want me to see what they were doing. And while I was out there, there was actually one of these in the parking lot. So I got to talk to the guy, he showed me under the hood and all that, and he was saying that this is the last year of this type of bumper. Uh, in 91, they start bringing the front turn signal lamps around the side here. He showed, yeah, he showed me under the hood. He was saying that this is the last year of this type of wheel as well, because uh, in 88, this wheel came out and it had a cap over the top to cover the bolts. But in 1990, they didn't have the cap on here. He was also saying that the tires in the back were wider because uh, this was a ZR1 performance package, of course. And uh, if you want to know, the model is also molded in 125th scale and you need paint and glue to put it together. On this side of the box, we read all the statistics of our ZR1 Corvette. It's a two seat front engine, rear wheel drive sports coupe, 375 horsepower, 5.7 liter, 350 cubic inch engine. 32 valves. This is one that was also engineered with Lotus. 32 valve dual overhead cam, LT5 V8 with port fuel injection, and it's got the six speed manual transmission. Unidirectional 17 inch cast aluminum wheels. Tires of Goodyear Eagles. Yep, 275 40 ZR17s in the front and 315 35 ZR17s in the rear. Sorry, it's hard to read from so far back. Uh, modern graphic decals, over 80 parts, and paint and cement is not included. And on this side of the box, we get four wonderful pictures. This is the uh, authentic ZR1 body styling in the back here. Detailed 5.7 liter, seven, uh, 375 horsepower LT5 engine. Ultra modern detailed interior. Sporty 17 inch wheels, cast aluminum wheels with Goodyear Eagle tires. The other thing he was saying is, the ZR1s in this year were the only ones with these square or rectangular shaped tail lights in the back, and that later Corvettes ended up with this bumper. There's even a history of the Corvette on the end of the box, which is quite unique for these model car kits. So that's enough teasing of the box. Let's open this thing up and see what's inside. This kit came out as an annual back in the day. So here we have our instructions, and it says that, that I bought this at John's Hobbies, June 14th, 2003, for $16.99. Big shout out for John's Hobbies. It actually became Monster Hobbies later on. Look, it's still all sealed in the bag from back then. That's pretty cool. Oops, there's our decals. Not supposed to show those till the end. <laughs> there's our chrome sheet there. And uh, an old blue printer with Star Trek VI on there. That's how long ago this was. And then we've got our glass down below and our four Corvette tires. Or is there only three? No, there's four. And our red components. Hey everybody, it's your old pal Danny the dog again. So here's the instruction sheet. And boy, they sure really give you a lot of uh, information here on this Corvette ZR1. This entire box right here is a write-up. And uh, here we've got our specifications like our displacement of 350 cubic inches and all that jazz. It even gives you the performance estimates. All figures are preliminary. I guess they didn't know back when this kit came out, for sure. But look at this cornering power, 1.2 Gs. Horsepower, 375 horsepower. Torque, 380 foot-pounds. 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. Quarter mile in 13 at 115 miles per hour. Top speed, approximately 180 miles an hour. That's crazy. So let's take a look at this instruction sheet in closer detail. Here's our ZR1 engine block assembly. What's really cool about this is that the starter motor is in the valley pan. That's interesting. Uh, might be hard to replace it, I don't know. Any Corvette guys out there that change this thing? Let us know in the comments down below. Anyway, you've got your right and left hand side engine block. Notice there's no transmission molded on the back. That's always nice. There's our oil pan. 
And here's the cylinder heads with those intakes on there, which is really cool. You need one on both sides, of course. And then our water pump in the front. Uh, step two of our engine shows our transmission going together. There's the left and right hand side for our six speed manual. Then we've got our bell housing that plugs on the back of the engine. And then we've got our valve covers up here going on. These are actually cam covers. I made a mistake. Um, but yeah, the dual overhead cams. And then we've got oil filters on each top of the cams. And then an, in what's that? an injection module on the back here. And then our intake plenum and our oil filter. Now here I'm going to show three panels because they fit into the camera lens pretty nicely. Here we have our belt with the serpentine pulley. Look at that crazy thing going all the way up around and back. Kind of like when I get lost in the backyard sometimes. There's the alternator going on. We've got a, de a decal. I guess that's our, well that's our air conditioner right there. And our power steering pump. Now here we've got a coolant crossover pipe which glues in place. And then our entire belt ex uh, thing goes on there, on the front of the engine. And then we've got our two-piece exhaust going on into all those cylinders. Then here we've got our chassis pan and the front suspension which drops down into place. Here we get into the rear suspension assembly. Now this is pretty common among many of the AMT, Ertl, and I guess MPC Corvettes because they're basically the same. Uh, then we've got our left control arm and our right control arm, then our differential in there, the drive shaft which will go up into the engine, the differential mount leaf rear spring assembly, and our control rods right here. What's nice is they give you the paint colors underneath each of the parts. Panel 7 shows our engine radiator to chassis assembly. Here we've got our assembled chassis with our suspension components as in panels 5 and 6. Now we're going to drop that wonderful motor right down here, hooking up the rear of the transmission onto our drive shaft. And then we're going to hook our radiator hose up onto our two-piece radiator. You get the upper radiator hose and the inlet duct. Panel 8 shows our exhaust assembly, and it's just two pieces, which is nice. So that will drop onto the exhaust manifold sticking out there and then this will glue into the back and up over the springs and all that kind of jazz. Then we have our spare tire carrier which will drop down here. Panel 9 shows our interior assembly and there's a note here it says before beginning assembly paint seats and interior as desired. Some factory colors include black and red. Use flat colors. Instrument panel, console top, steering wheel and shift lever remain flat black regardless of upholstery color. So that's good to know. You can also check out images of this on Google. So there's our dashboard and our Corvette steering wheel plugging in place. Now this has got the uh, newer dashboard compared to some of the earlier models we took a look at for our Corvettes here. Then we've got our leather driving seats dropping in place as well as our gear shift lever. Panel 10 shows our engine compartment assembly. We've got a coolant recovery tank gluing on top of our heater and our air conditioner accumulator will glue on there. We've got this neat battery that drops in place. There's a decal for it and our master brake cylinder. It says carefully remove shaded area prior to assembly. And note, before beginning this assembly body, hood, headlights and nose panel should be painted as desired. Some factory colors include white, black, bright red, medium dark, uh, medium blue, pardon me, dark blue, dark red, gray, and charcoal gray metallic. Panel 11 shows our interior to body assembly. It says note windows shown in place. Okay, uh, the rear view mirrors will go up inside here and then our assembled interior will drop in place. It says for the windows to remove the shaded areas and cement into body prior to assembly. So that of course are those cross beams. Panel 12 shows our wheel assembly going together and this is the basic uh, wheel, tire, backing pin and rear hub for each of the wheels. And it says to note the, the uh, direction of the tires, how they're going on there. And remember we got the wider ones going in the back and the narrow ones going in the front. And you've got to take your hobby knife and cut out this web in the middle. Panel 13 shows the final chassis assembly, which of course is just gluing wheels on. So make sure you have all these going in the right direction, just like it says, of course, in the step 12. 
Panel 14 shows our hood assembly and here we've got the hinges that glue on and then our headlights that are up underneath and then we have our inner fenders going on the top. In step 15 we've got our body to chassis assembly so you want to drop the body on and carefully hook the hood onto these little pins on the chassis. There's our headlights going in, or sorry, our parking lights. There's our nose panel which glues on as well. And then once it's all together, you've got a really cool looking fourth generation Corvette. Panel 16 shows our final assembly and optional decal placement. We also have our tail lamps popping into the back. And uh, there's all the decals and, and shows you just how to paint all the little side marker lamps and the Corvette logo and everything else. Now I can't wait to get my paws into those plastic parts, so take it away, Trevor. Yeah, Danny, these are some really cool plastic parts and they've really been preserved over time. So let's take a look at this. Here we've got our Corvette body and of course you've got to remove these little caps off of here just like on all the other AMT Corvette kits and MPC. I think MPC started making these and then when AMT bought MPC, they uh, just put their AMT logo on there, but still it does look pretty nice. A little bit of a seam line running up in here on the corners, but I think that's typical for these. This is pretty much accurate for our ZR1. In fact, I would say it's very accurate for our ZR1. Uh, look at there, you got your square taillights and the uh, license plate shroud. The body is really nice on here, nice and crisp. So this must have been a new tool back in the day just to get that rear end on there. Uh, or maybe a modification. There's our earlier fourth gen front bumper style on there before they get the wraparound headlamps, the uh, parking lights, pardon me. I keep saying headlights. Oh, yeah, yeah. Overall looks really good. They even have the uh, sun visors molded up under the hood. A couple little mold marks, but nothing that couldn't be taken out with that number 16 hobby blade and a little bit of sandpaper and elbow grease. Next up, we have our parts tree with the hood and the little front nose clip, our hood hinges and our dashboard. Now, I always like this tan color for plastic because it, if you want to paint this thing red, it really uh, brings up the red on it for whatever reason. It's very nice stuff. A couple of mold marks up front here and in the corners, which again you'd have to get rid of with your number 11, or sorry, number 16 hobby blade. Uh, some mold marks there. You can easily sandpaper those down a little bit. But uh, as Danny was saying there, this is the newer dashboard for the Corvette. It's got the uh, digital readouts up on the sides there and the console drops down into the passenger compartment. I think the uh, previous Corvette I reviewed was, I think, 86, if I remember right. And the dashboard is quite different from the 86, as you can see. So a lot of good upgrades in this kit. This might even be the first year of this type of dashboard. I'm not 100% sure. But overall, I would give these parts an A+. Next up, we have our interior tub and our bucket seats. There's the shift lever in a lot of uh, sprue right there <laughs> and our Corvette steering wheel again very nicely done look at the molding on the inner door for a tub that's really excellent uh, the mold marks are underneath the seat that's really where we want them to be on all models so that when you put the seats down you don't even have to scrape this it's just disappears that would be nice AMT keep doing that um, round two go back and fix things <laughs> Look at the nice detail on the seats. Those actually look like real leather. I could use that sand paint on there, which make it look really good. But I was doing these Corvettes as a series, supposed to celebrate the 50th. I was doing them all polo white with the red interior. So those should look good with the reds. And I remember looking at that guy's Corvette and all these little buttons and knobs on the ends of the chairs. That was really neat, like Star Trek. Anyway, so that's how that part looks. Here we've got our Corvette chassis, and this is pretty much like the other Corvette chassis that I've taken a look at, only I do think it is a bit different somehow. There's uh, not the stuff back here like there is on the 86 Corvettes. So again, I do believe this is a brand new undercarriage. At any rate, it still looks good, just like the Corvette should. Is it warped? I think it's got a little bit of a warp in here. Anyway, hopefully I can straighten that out. But overall, it is quite nice. Should uh, should be quite easy to clean up. 
Now here's our front suspension and rear suspension components. One of the little sides popped off on me, but that's okay, as long as it's still in the box. There's our differential with the arms sticking out, and then our spring and rear suspension assembly, the side bits, and then we've got our front steering with the rack and pinion style steering there, and our drive shaft. Again, very nicely done. Some mold marks off the back, a little bit of flash. Ah! <laughs> but overall, not bad. This parts tree is where all the meat and potatoes are located. There's our parts tree with the mufflers and exhaust system on it. Our wheels, the backs, and the little retainers. I do still have that one, it just popped off. There's our battery, our brake master cylinder, parts of the plenum, the headlights, the uh, washer bottles and whatnot. There's our serpentine belt, our two-piece radiator, and it's nice because it's got the actual plenum front end molded on here. So that saves a lot of stress and headache. There's our spare tire carrier and the inner fender aprons for that hood. Now let's just bring this up to the camera and inspect it. The detail on here is nice and crisp. Again, I do believe this is the first edition of this kit. So, there, oh, look at the back there. Look at those dual fans on there. That is pretty cool. I like that. I think Danny would like it too. Keep them nice and cool. Anyway, there you go. Now here we have the really wonderful looking chrome parts tree with the engine that was a joint cooperation between Corvette and Lotus. And again, this is pretty cool. It's got the 32 valves per cylinders right there. And again, the chrome is really nice. Did you know that Mercury Marine in Oklahoma had to produce these motors because the Chevy Corvette plant was not really geared up in order to build these? So that's always cool. There's our wheels and the only uh, sort of downside, but I guess it's the only way they could do this, is that these are not drilled through, but you'll have to put in some black paint in there, which is not really a big deal. So let's bring this up to the camera. Look at that wonderful looking engine. All chrome. So if you remember my uh, unbox or my build video of the uh, Thunderbird all chrome engine, you can easily follow the steps in there. And I'll leave a link to that just coming up across the top right there. So there's those Corvette wheels. Again, they look accurate to the real thing. Our little side marker lamps there, our, our uh, fog lights, I guess. There's our exhaust manifold and the shift lever, the mirror, alternator, all that cool stuff. Just excellent looking. And then on the back, there are some sink marks, but I think they're all hidden very well in there. So again, this is a really wonderful chrome parts tree and should be fun to glue together. Here we have the parts that make up the clear components, and it always amazed me how they get these rear defroster lines into the window. I mean, that totally just blows my brain right out of my skull on how they got that to do that. No, I'm just kidding. I know how they did it. They just made some lines in the plastic mold. Anyway, one thing about these Corvettes is you have to paint the uh, black on the inside ridge, I do believe, yeah. And that can kind of be a bit difficult. Uh, even if, if you decide to use masking tape, it can be tricky to cut the tape around here. If you do it freehand, there's a chance that you get a wobble. And you've got to put it on in order that uh, you don't get glue on it when you're gluing this up inside the car. Maybe that's not a consideration because it's on the inside. The glue would be on the outside. I don't know. But at any rate, it is a bit tricky. And there's that front windshield, of course. Would have been nice if AMT had put this in a bag back in 89. Although I guess their thinking was the other bags would protect it. I don't know. But at any rate, there it is. And it looks like they gave me an extra set of tail lamps. These ones are nice and smooth. And they just plug in with these little pins in from the front of the car. You know, going in that back panel. But overall, again, the clear parts are really, really well done. Here we have our Goodyear Eagle directional tires. We've got the 40s in the front and the 35s in the back. This is just like a mullet back in the day because you had the business in the front and the party in the back. At any rate, they are actually taller than each other, which is good, just like the real tire. Wider, I guess, wider. So always make sure that you've got these going in the right direction. The, sh the little Vs, I guess, if you want to call that in the tread, there should be paint pointing forward, not painting forward. You have to remove the webs out of here with your hobby knife, like Danny said in the instruction sheet. 
but overall they are good and they also show the rotation on the sides just like the real tire so you won't end up getting them on backwards i hope and to wrap up the model we have this really cool decal sheet with these really amazing 1990s style graphics on there and here we've got a hawaii license plate so that's always cool i should save that and use that on one of the cars for a tiki diorama big tiki restaurant with model cars that'd be really cool there's our uh, decals right there for underneath the hood. And then we've got a I Love Model Cars decal with the AMT logo and the MPC logo on there. I always like that bumper sticker too. So now the choice is up to you. Do you like what you see inside this box and do you think it would be a good model kit to put on your shelf? If so, I wish you a lot of good luck. If you saw this video and you do not think it's a good idea, please let us know down in the comment section below. And if you want to see what great model kits we have for sale, don't forget to visit us at www.monster-hobbies.ca. We're in Canada, and we can ship anywhere around the world. Thank you everybody for watching our model car unboxing video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. And if you really want to show your support, click that join button right below this video. Until next time everyone! Happy model building!